All right, so we're going to build on our conversation about figure ground relationships. We're never, ever, ever again going to refer to something as positive or negative. Okay, yeah, we are. But we are going to think about figure ground in terms of relationships, and we're going to think about them in terms of the impact that they have upon composition. But we do want to get some definitions out of the way. And one of the things that has happened is that we've given special names to some of the weird things that artists can do with figure ground relationships. Some of the things that are kind of interesting and create visually striking solutions that we then give special names to. One of those we're going to learn by yet another in the endless series of stories from my life. So, I am an army brat. We came back from Germany in the fall of, 20, of not 2018, no, in the fall of 1988. And like any good family back in America, we decided to go to the movies. Specifically, we went to the movies for Christmas because my brother was home from college. And when you have a family and you want to pretend that you're a happy family, you go to the movies because then you can theoretically do something together, but still never talk to each other. I am so old, though, that when we went to the movies, we had to do this thing called stand in line. Now, you with your fandangos and your phones and your special get off my lawn, don't have to do this as much anymore, but we had to stand in line to buy a ticket, then we had to stand in line again to get into the theater. It was, oh, it was, I'm amazed we survived. It's the resiliency of the human race that's really impressive. Anyway, we're standing in line, and I noticed that my mom keeps looking over at this particular poster that was up for the coming attractions, advertising what we obviously all know is going to be like the most amazing movie ever coming out the following summer. She looks over at it and then she squints and then she does the puppy dog head tilt and then she's confused and then she looks away. And I noticed this because I'm doing the thing that all teenagers do, which is trying to figure out exactly the right distance where I stand close enough to my parents that they have to pay for my ticket, but far enough away from my parents that no one thinks that I'm actually with them. So I can see my mom do this like three, maybe four times. She keeps looking over at this particular poster, obviously confused, and finally I can't take it anymore, and I ask, Mom, what's wrong? And she responds, What's the deal with the gold teeth? <sighs> so, other than the fact that my mom is the least hip person ever to walk the planet, what do we learn from this? What we learn is that my mom was actually doing something that has a name. It's called a positive negative reversal, where she is going to read, in this case, the gold as solid and what is clearly the bat for Batman as a big empty void. So she's going to read it as gold teeth on a black background. One of the things that we can see with a positive negative reversal is that it requires a really high contrast image. We have to have something that's like really strong and graphic. And one of the things that can happen if you have a really graphic image is that it be can become somewhat ambiguous. What am I looking at in terms of solid versus not solid? Incidentally, sometimes we do that on purpose. Uh, when Christopher Nolan rebooted the Batman franchise, we have the exact same idea. We're going to say, oh, it's clouds. Oh, wait, no, it's a bat. Oh, wait, they're buildings. Oh, wait, no, it's just all the cool stuff that's coming out of the... Yay! Heath Ledger, we miss you. Why does this work? Well, it works because of two rules that we keep in our head that actually kind of contradict each other. One is what we could call the drawing rule, which is that most of you are used to making dark marks on a light background. Either you came in with your pencil on a piece of paper or you came in with your crayons on your parents' walls. But either way, we start to read the mark as the stuff, as the positive space, and the wall, the paper, as the not space. So we read it as the negative. But 
we also have what I like to call the Wiley Coyote rule of compositional integrity, which is that dark or black is a whole. We're going to read it as an absence. This is what Wiley Coyote is hoping to do every time he paints a big black circle on the canyon wall, and yet the Roadrunner somehow manages to run through it. He, however, hits the solid wall. What we've got is if you focus right here, you can actually start to read the black as this big inky void of nothingness, and we start to read the white as the solid things. When I'm looking at the overall composition, the whole thing, I'm more likely to read the black as the solid marks, but I can still have this sense of absence, this sense of emptiness, so that I start to read these wedges of solid white and these as the negative space. So it's a positive negative reversal. My mom sees gold teeth. Every other human being on the planet sees a black hat. When they switch back and forth, we can call it a positive negative reversal. Basically, M.C. Escher would not have existed without positive negative reversals. It's a kind of interesting, fun visual trick that we can play. All right, the next definition we're going for for a kind of interesting use of figure ground relationships is what's called an interspace. This whole image is not a true interspace, but there are elements of interspace with it. An interspace is essentially what your drawing teacher asked you to do when she asked you to draw the negative space. So here we are defining the five by the not the five. So I have a clear mark I have a clear mark over here. I can tell where the corner of that five is because of how I articulate the space around the five, the interspace, the space in between the forms to define it. I can do the same thing with black down here. I know where the five is because of how I defined the not the five. I know where the five is, etc. Now, because Jasper Johns is not just trying to illustrate my talk, he also will occasionally define where the five is by defining where the five is. But anytime we see somebody drawing or painting or whatevering a space by an object, we are seeing someone create an interspace. Think about it this way. If I were to draw a tree by drawing all the air between the branches, I would be creating an interspace. We can also have what's called a figure ground shift. This is easily confused with a positive negative reversal, but a positive negative reversal basically works like a light switch. You either see the gold teeth or you see the bat, one or the other. A figure ground shift is slippery, it slides. When I am looking down here, the black shape seems to poke into the white space, and so I'm gonna read this as figure and this as ground. But as I slide up, this bulge of white seems to be a solid thing entering the empty space of the black. So I'm gonna read this as figure and this as ground. But as I come back up here, oh, we got another black bulge. It's pushing into the negative space, the open ground of the white, and we have a positive shape. And yet, when I follow that same white to the point where it gets to this sharp little point, I'm going to read it as the solid and the space around it as the negative. So it's still doing similar things to the positive negative reversal, but instead of it flipping one way or the other way, like a toggle switch or a light switch, here we're going to slide between forms depending on which aspect of it I'm looking at. We have a final definition, which is for an integrated figure ground relationship. And that is where the artist is deliberately creating an image where while I can tell where the figure is and where the ground is, exactly where one stops and the other starts is somewhat ambiguous because it's so thoroughly integrated. Where exactly is her body? Can I draw a hard line to define the side of her head? Or does it just sort of disappear into the shadow or merge with the background? And so when we're thinking about an integrated figure ground relationship, it's one where I don't have like real clear, hard outlines.